Dear students, a warm welcome to VTU e section of program. So, this video is going to the continuation of module 3 of artificial neural networks. So, as we are already aware about that, the structural risk minimization, we have come across with uh, imperial minimization, risk minimization in the previous video. So, this video is going to continue with the structural risk minimization. As we mentioned earlier, whenever we train a machine on a given training set, the approximates generates are naturally biased towards those data points. And it is necessary to ensure that the model chosen from representation of the underlying function has a complexity or a capacity that matches the data set in question. So, the solution offered by the statistical learning theory is going to be called as structural risk minimization. This is going to be called as the structural risk minimization. The structural risk minimization. One of the important consequences of this VC theory is that the difference between the imperial and expected risk can be bounded in terms of the VC dimension, in terms of the VC dimension. So, that is going to be the important parameter. So, coming to this for a binary classifications of functions which take a value either 0 or 1 for some values which may be for the uh, epsilon value which is going to be get falls between 0 to 1. The following bounds is going to be get created over. So, that the following bounds holds the probability at least 1 minus epsilon. So, that the factor which is going to be present with the imperial error and which is going to hold with the confidence level of 1 minus epsilon. Here the second term on this right hand side is going to be called as VC confidence, VC confidence and this is bound is said to be hold with a confidence level of 1 minus epsilon, the level is going to be 1 minus epsilon. Coming to this structure, the structural risk minimization SRM, which is going to minimum the combination of the imperial risk and the complexity of this hypothesis space. In equality, the above equation, what we have seen over there, this equation suggests the way to achieve a good generalization by making the minimum or minimize the combination of the imperial risk and the complexity of the hypothesis space. So, this is the philosophy that underlies the concept of structural risk minimization. That is the concept which is going to rely with the structural risk minimization. So, this is the philosophy that is going to be underlies the concept. Since the space of function f where the loss L is defined is usually very large. The idea is to restrict the focus of learning to a smaller space which is going to be called as hypothesis space, hypothesis space. So, the idea is to restrict the focus of learning to a smaller space that is going to be called as hypothesis space. So, that the Structural risk minimization SRM therefore defines as nested sequence of hypothesis spaces as F1 is a set of F2 is a set of F3 is a set of F4 Fn of an increasing complexity in such a way that the VC dimension Hi of F5 is finite and an element Fi in the structure constraints totally bounded with a loss function is going to be bounded with a loss function that is going to be dealt as h1 is going to be lesser than or equal to h2 is going to be lesser than or equal to hn etcetera. 
which is going to be increasing complexity. That is going to be an increasing complexity. So, the way the BC dimension of HI of Fi is going to be finite and the element Fi is the structure constraints totally bounded with this loss function. Let me see about this diagram, a nested hypothesis space form a structure. The figure portrays such a structure of hypothesis space which shows that they are nested, it is going to be nested. F1 nested in F2, F1, F2 nested in F3, F1, F2 nested in F4 like that is going to be nested, it is going to be get nested over there. Note that the nesting inputs implies that each successive hypothesis space contains all the preceding less complex hypothesis spaces, such a way it is going to be get present. And coming to the imperial and expected risk minimization, each hypothesis space Fi has its own VC dimensions as HA. And this VC dimension increases the uh, increases with the sequence of hypothesis spaces as, as we have come across over there as H. H1 is going to be less than or equal to H2 is going to be less than or equal to H3 like that less than or equal to Hn. So, since the model which is going to be used uh, parameters which is going to be used uh, parameters uh, it is going to be parameterized each successive hypothesis space has more parameters than all the one that proceeds in its sequence. So, with each hypothesis space F one can find the function f i comma q. The q that minimizes the imperial error over the q training points. Mathematically we can emphasize that as f i comma q is equal to average of this minimum value which have been given over there to this particular function. R suffix e the imperial risk of f i comma q. Note that this function is different from the function of Fi that is the true minimizer of the expected risk in this particular thing. Here the i which is going to be increases the number of parameters when it is going to be increases. This i which is going to be increases the parameters which increases the parameters. So, the different form of Fi is the true minimizer of this expected risk are in this particular F i. So, we can come to know about that this is going to be an important data. So, this means that the successive model have greater flexibility such that the imperial growth, the imperial error which is the first term in the equation what we have seen in the previous the same equation which can be pushed down further however increasing the value of i in the vc dimensions which in turn increases the second term in the equation. So, that the issue is to find the element f n of q the find the element f n of q is the hypothesis space structure that minimize the right side or right hand side of this particular equation. So, the goal is to set an appropriate hypothesis space to match the training data complexity to the model capacity. This gives the best generalization, this gives the best generalization. Moving on to the approximation error bias, to put up this idea on a more firm footing. Note that there are now essentially two cross associations with the learning of this underlying functions are going to be get present over there. The first by restricting we have to restrict it. First we have to restrict the space of possible functions to be less complex than the target space. So, we are introducing an approximation error E a which can be measured by the difference in the expected risks associated with the best function of f i in the f i function space. And the optimal function f naught that minimizes the r value or space in the 
target space or value in the target space. Note that this energy depends only on the power of up, uh, uh, sorry the, the power of approximation of this particular function hypothesis classic and not on the training set and is similar in the spirit to term of this bias variant dilemma as already we have come across about the bias variant dilemma. So, a similar in spirit of this term is going to be get present over there. Coming to this estimation error, the variance, the estimation error, the variance, we introduce the finite training set with which the machine will be trained. Learning from the finite data minimizes the imperial risk in this particular space, finite space, function space and not to the expected risk R. This means uh, really what we search a function f i when the q samples are going to be a subset of the function i, subset of the function space i, which is the minimizer of this imperial risk that is going to be, that is not a function of this f i, that is a true minimizer which is going to be expected in the value r in this particular risk factor i. So, this is a second source of error and this is going to be called as estimator error e of e, e suffix e. This is simple as well similar in the spirit to the variance term in the bias variance dilemma. Therefore, the generalization error eg is really the sum of the approximation error and the estimation error. So, that the generalization error is going to be taken as approximation error plus the estimator error. Though both the functions are going to be sum of this particular thing is going to be called as the generalization error. We will come to know about a warning on bound accuracy that some of the terms we must aware about it, we must need to know. We need to make one last point that equation which we have come across over there e g is equal to e a plus e e. The generalization error is equal to approximation error plus estimation error shows that as the number of training points increases, the difference between the imperial and the expected risk decreases. They move closer to one another. On the other hand, as the confidence level increases, which means the epsilon becomes smaller, the VC confidence term becomes increasingly a large one. This is really means that if one has a finite set of training data, one cannot increase the confidence level indefinitely because as one tries to do so, the accuracy provided by the bounds is going to be get decreased, the bounds is going to be get decreased. Let me see with this introduction of this, we can enter into the new topic, the next topic of model number 3, support vector mission. So far we have come across about the statistical learning algorithm, the statistical learning theory and its relations. Now we are going to see about the next topic of this model 3 support vector mission, support vector mission, shortly we can call it as SVM. This is going to be abbreviated as SVM. Let me see about the definition, what actually this is going to be. SVM or a support vector mission is a linear model for a classification and regression problem. It is a linear model for a classification and regression problems. It can solve linear or a nonlinear problem and work well for many practical problems. So that the idea of this support vector machine is going to be very simple. The logarithm creates a line or a hyper plan which separates the data into classes, which separates the data into classes. 
So, as we are aware about that, it can solve a linear or a nonlinear problem and it will work on the practical problems as we are aware about that it creates a line or a hyperplane which separates the data into classes. What actually the theorem behind this support vector machine is going to be? At first approximation what this support vector machine do is to find a separate line or a hyperplane between data of the two classes. So, the SVM is an algorithm that takes the data as an input and outputs a line that separates those classes into possible. Such a theorem is going to be get provided in this particular support vector mission. Let me see about some of the introduction. So, the support vector mission as a firm grounding in the VC theory of statistical learning and essentially implements a structural risk minimization and the support vector machine which is going to be originated in the work of VC co-works at the AT and T Bell laboratories. Although the initial work focused on the optical character recognition, so the support vector classifiers were soon applied to the object recognition task. Subsequently, these machines were applied to the regression and the time series prediction tasks. So, the support vector machine has quickly evolved into an active and promising area of research given in a strong theoretical foundations and a fast profilication of industrial applications. So, the literature which is going to get supports the support vector classifications and regression mission is rich and plentiful. So, we will develop a working knowledge of support vector classifier and regression machines and see how which is going to be work with a MATLAB code and which can be easily developed to design a operational system in this further topics in the further classes. So, as we are aware about that this is going to be focused on the two things are called as optical characteristics and second object recognition. And later the application have been extended to regression and the time series prediction tasks. Let me see about the context what actually is going to be there. It is going to be called as a design objective, the design objective. The formulation of this classic support vector mission is essentially based on the notation which is going to be get portrayed in the figure which is going to be portrayed in this figure. We consider two set of data points ok. We are going to consider two set of data points two classes as C1 and C2 using linear indicator function example a hyperplane classifier such as a simple TLN which can be dealt over there. To begin with we consider the data set that are linearly separable. Later on we will relax this condition to the non separable cases so that we can familiar with the fact that once the problem is going to be linearly separable infinite solution exist and we saw that this going to be the context of the preceptor learning. So, that we are going to look into this particular thing. So, if you are going to come across about this particular design objective which is going to be data set is going to be linearly separable and if you are going to see about this figure which have been there the, which is going to be present in the hyperplane that maximize the margin. The two such solutions for the linearly separable two class data scatters the particular question to ask is which solution do you think will generalize better to unseen examples. Intuitively the second solution obviously we are going to think about the second solution is it it or not. So, 
So the figure we are going to show this should do much better because there is a large margin between the separating hyperplane and the closest data points. It is this intuit idea that supports the support vector machine exploits. Consider about this. Here it has been segregated like this. Whereas the closeness is not at all going to be there. It is going to be somewhat over. There. Coming to this, this distance to the closest distant point on either side of the planes are going to be present over there. So easily it can be get separable. So distance to closest to points on either side of this hyperplanes are going to be get same. As we are aware about that we can come to know. We can identify the distance between this from this both are going to be equal. So, in this formulation of this support vector machine, we will follow the traditional approach which starts out from a geometrical viewpoint. Although one could also come up with a very clean treatment of the model straightening or model starting with regularis uh, regularization theorem. So, let me see about the line separation, the hypothesis linearly separable classes. A maximum margin hyperplane in this two class classification problem. So that we are going to assume that we are giving a training data set as already we have come across over there. I am going to give you a data set is going to be linearly separable and I am going to take this t is equal to t is equal to the data value is going to be given over there and an inductor function the indicator function is going to be given over there f which is the bipolar sine number function which will ultimately permits a mapping from each one of the input points x of k to the appropriate function d of k. So, the class c1 points will be indicated by a plus 1 value and point c2 value will be indicated by a value called as minus 1 value and thus called negative samples. Okay. Just we are going to take about that one C1 are going to be positive samples and C2 are going to be called as negative samples. So, note that the linear separable implies that we can find an oriented hyperplan defined by a set of weights W and a bios W0. We are, here we are going to assume that the weight vector is not an argumented so that which separates the positive data point from the negative ones. So, we are going to move on to the hyper hypothesis space. So, that for all points of the hyper plan we know that the w cross x plus w naught is equal to 0 which is going to define the equation of this hyperplan. So, that the our hypothesis space is going to be the space of function which is going to be defined as f of x comma w comma w naught is equal to sine of x dot x plus w naught which classifies the data points based on either the quantity w cross w dot x plus w naught is positive or negative. Just recall from our past study of the perspective classifier that for a solution weight vector w s we had to ensure that w s dot x plus w naught should be always larger than 0 more greater than 0 for all the data points in C 1 and w s dot x plus w naught should be lesser than or equal to 0 for all the data points belonging to C 2 as we are already aware about that one. So, that what happens this cloud position or this position the hyper plan anywhere between these two classes possibly close to any one of the boundary data points as we have seen in the figure. 
which is going to be closer to any of the any one of the hyperplane as shown in the figure. So, the consideration was one of the correct classification on the training set and not one of the better generalization on the test set that is going to be the main thing. Here we want to do better than merely getting 100 percent correct classification on the training set. We want to maximize the margin from the separation hyperplan to the nearest point of positive and negative data points. In other words, in other words, we can say that we want to find the minimum margin hyperplan for the given training set. So that the dot value, if you are going to see about this, the dot value which denotes the inner point, the dot value which is going to be denote the inner product operator, the inner product operator. We employ the notation W inner product operator X rather than the transverse of W T of X. To emphasize that the operation is going to be one of the inner product. So, in this section on this perception learning we had classes C naught comma C to emphasize the TLN data which maps to 0 or 1. Here we can employ C1, C2 where C points to maps to plus 1 and C2 maps to minus 1. Okay. So, let me discuss about the definition of this particular margin actual thing which is going to get present over the definition of margin. Let the perpendicular distance from the separation hyperplan to the closest data points of C1 and C2 be denoted by D plus and D minus respectively as seen in this figure. This area is going to be taken as D plus and this distance is going to be taken as D minus. So, this perpendicular distance from this hyperplane to the closest two points of C1 and C2 are denoted as D plus and D minus. Move on to the reformulation of the classification criteria. We define the distance D plus or D minus as the margin to introduce the idea of this margin into a solution we need to tighten the classification criteria for correct classifications. So, then the original criteria for the correct classification is going to be w dot x i plus w which is going to be less than 0 greater than 0 where d i is equal to plus 1 in the class c 1. Whereas, w dot x i plus w naught is going to be less than less than 0 during d i is going to be minus 1 when the class is going to be C2. This is now reformulated, this is from reformulated as W dot X plus W naught may be greater than or equal to plus del during DI is equal to plus 1 and same thing is going to be lesser than or equal to minus del during the time DI is equal to 1. By introducing the positive constant of del value delta value, this formulation constrains the hyperplane to a position such that for the closest data points x plus comma x minus. So, that we may rewrite, we may rewrite the expression as introducing a margin value in the hyperplane satisfies w dot x plus w naught is equal to plus or minus delta depending upon which side of the hyperplane they are on, it may be plus delta or it may be minus delta without any loss of general, uh, generality, we may set a del is equal to 1, usually we can set del is equal to 1. Since this requires only that we choose an appropriate scale for the value w and w naught. 
So that the set of this hyperplane for which del is equal to 1 is going to be called as set of canonical separating hyperplane. The set of hyperplanes for this particular value which is going to be del is equal to 1 is going to be called the set of canonical separating hyperplane for which we may rewrite as w dot x plus w naught is going to be greater than or equal to plus 1 during di is equal to plus 1 or less than or equal to minus 1 during di is equal to minus 1 or more compactly we can rewrite this expression as di of xi into w plus w naught is minus 1 is going to be greater than or equal to 0. This is going to be an actual compact value which is going to be derived over there. Let us see some of the notations which is going to be related with that one. Considering the data point on the positive side of the separating hyperplane which is going to be characterized by W or W naught. For convenience of this exposition we refer to this separating hyperplane as the value that is going to be closest to that of x plus. So the figure shows that x plus is a data point from the C1 closest to the hyper plane and x2 is going to be the closest to point which is going to be get noted over here which is going to be de de shown in this particular diagram. Note that the direction of w is going to be a normal as mentioned. So x plus is the data point from the c1 that is closest to the value of let be the unique point of this particular which is going to be closest to the top the x plus value. We are interesting in maximizing this particular value of modulo of x plus minus x. From this definition we can write the equation as with this particular parameter as w into x plus plus w naught is equal to 1 or which is going to be rewrite as is going to be equal to 0. Move on to the expression for this particular margin we can define, we can define the equation for the hyperplan for this pair of equations we may rewrite. This expression can be w into x plus minus x plus minus 1 is equal to 1. Since x plus minus x is also normalized to this particular parameter. It has the same direction as w, we can expand the left hand side of this above equation as this and it can be get providing the value of this which implies that is equal to 1. Otherwise the distance d plus, otherwise eventually the distance d plus is going to be healed, the value of d plus is equal to modulus of this value 1 over modulus w. Here we can refer d plus or d minus as the margin. This is only a matter of notation that has no bearing on the final result which is going to be present over there. So as mentioned the distance d plus is called the margin. A similar argument can be made for the data point of this negative side and we have had d plus is equal to d where the total margin turns out to be a total margin value is going to be out to be m is equal to d plus plus d minus that is equal to 2 by modulus of w which is going to be healed the total margin value. From this we are going to take into the support vector, we are going to move to the support vector. Note from this particular figure that the hyperplan on which the points of x plus or x minus is going to lies are parallel 
and no training points falls in between them. If you are going to see about that, the values are going to get present over there. So, this is 1 over W, this is 1 over W. It is a total margin value which is going to get present over there. This is a margin value which have been specified over there. These are the two points which have been taken over there from this exact value. This is a support vectors which are going to get present over there. So, here this is going to be a plus value and here this is going to be a minus value which have been shown over there. The vectors on this margin are the support vectors and the total margin is going to be 2 by modulo of W. So, clearly the maximum margin classifier is one of the minimizers. So, from our earlier discussions, the margin width will have a discrete bearing on the generalization ability to the hyperplan. So, the data point which satisfies the equality in the equation lies on the margin and are called support vectors and hence the name support vector machine is going to be get present for this. So, support vectors are thus the data points that are closest to the hyperplan and are the one that plays a central role in the definition of the hyperplan. And as well we see shortly in the generalization of this decision surface in the next forthcoming topic that is going to be called as structural risk minimization versus support vector mechanics. Let me see about that SVM and SRM structural risk minimization in support vector machines. To invoke the structural risk minimization principle one need to be able to generate a set of hyperplans with varying the VC dimensions and minimize the imperial risk and the VC dimensions simultaneously. In the present case, a structure on the set of canonical hyperplan is going to be defined by varying the norms of the weight vector. As pointed out in it, all the data points lies within a n-dimensional hyperspace of a radius rho. Then the set of line indicator function which is going to be dealt as f of a is equal to a function is equal sine of w dot x plus f naught which is going to be the value. As the VC dimension as satisfies the following bound which is going to have h is going to be greater than or sorry, less than or equal to minimum of rho square a square comma n plus 1. The interesting point here it is that it is possible to control the VC dimensions the complexity of this particular hyper plan okay, independent of the sample space dimension. Now, we know that the distance from the canonical separation hyper plan to the closest data point is 1 over w. Therefore, suppose we constrain this value, this w value is going to be less than or equal to a. Then the distance from this hyperplan to the closest data point must be greater than 1 over a it should be greater than 1 over a. Therefore, the constraint set of the canonical hyperplane referred to in the equations are precisely those whose distance from the data plane is at least 1 over a. It must be at least 1 over a. Understand? So, that the interesting point what we have observed over there is nothing but the particular data. So, the constraint set of this canonical hyperplanes referred into these equations are precisely at least the value data point will have 1 over A. Let me discuss the same with an implementation, SVM implementation on SRM. And SVM implements this SRM by constraining the hyperplanes to the 
lie outside the hypersites of this radius 1 over a. The figure shows the simply means that if one places a sphere of radius 1 by a around each data point, then the hyperplane cannot intersect any of the spheres. It cannot intersect any of the spheres. As if you are going to see about that, the spheres are going to get present over there. The intersection points are going to be differ. It is not able to intersect any of the spheres. With this idea and the VC dimension bound equation which is going to get placed, we can now define a structure on the set of hyperplanes in order of increasingly complexity by controlling the particular norms of weight vector. The norms of weight vector as f a i is equal to f is equal to sin of w dot x plus w dot with a value of a 1 is going to be lesser than that of a 2, lesser than that of a 3, etc., lesser than that of a n. In the present problem, the minimizing will also simultaneously minimize the VC dimension while maximizing the margin. That is going to be the actual thing we have to observe from this. Let me see about the objectives of this support vector machine. This is simply we can call it as construction of support vector machine. To construct an optimal separation maximum margin classifier, a support vector machine attempts to classify the data in a training set which is going to be called as uh, a training set data t is equal to we can come to know about that the training set data t is equal to this value. Using the smallest norms of weights this is a cast as an optimization problem which is going to be get minimized with a value as psi of w is equal to 1 by 2 w square subject to the constraints we are going to replace this di of x i w plus w naught minus 1 is going to be greater than or equal to 0 where i is equal to 1 2 3 up to q value. Note that the objective was to maximize the margin since the square root is going to be monotonic function one can switch over to the w square instead of w and this is why we want to minimize 1 by 2 w square. So, to solve this optimization problem we can turn to the techniques going to be called as Lagrange multiplier. The methods of Lagrange, Lagrange multipliers. This is done for two reasons. The, const, uh, the constraints on the Lagrange, Lagrangian multipliers are uh, easier to handle and most importantly the training data will appear in the form of a dot products in the final questions. A fact that we extensively exploits in the nonlinear supported vector machine. So, we may see that is going to be a moment for the present problem. We constrain this Lagrangian into the particular function. So, this Lagrangian multiplier is going to be as I said which is going to be used for two reasons. One is going to be for the constraints on the Lagrangian multipliers are going to be easier to handle and the training data appears in the form of dot products in the final equation a fact that we can extensively exploit in the nonlinear support vector machine. So, as the formula what we have been formulating the problem in the primal space we are going to take the value as the particular lambda 1 to lambda n the lambda 1 is going to be greater than or equal to 0 is a vector of the Lagrange multiplier. So, the present problem we can constrain the Laglerian with Lp is a Lp of w comma w naught comma lambda is equal to 1 over 2 w square. Here, 
the vector of Lagrange multiplier for the constraints is going to be changed from la lambda 1 to lambda q transpose. This problem has been formulated in which what is going to be called as a primal space of variables w. So, the saddle point of LP is going to be the solution to this problem and this requires a minimizing an LP with respect to the W. So, the W naught and maximizing it with respect to the non-negative lambda i values. So, this lag range multiplier lambda i for each inequality constraints the rule is that each constraint must take the form of c i is going to be greater than or equal to 0. So, that then each constraint is going to be multiplied by the corresponding lag range multiplier and subtracted from the objective function to yield the lag, lag range ends. So, for any equal or equality constraints the lag range multipliers are going to be unconstrained. For our convenience we reformulate the optimization problem in what is going to be called as dual space, the space of Lagrangian multipliers. Let us see about that shift to dual space. This will make the optimization problem much cleaner in the sense of, in the sense that it will require only a maximum of lambda i. A translation of this dual form is possible because both the cost function and the constraints are directly convex. So, the condition for this optimum of this constraint optimization problems are going to be invoked to translate the particular terminology to the dual form. So, these are necessary and sufficient conditions for the solutions to convex the optimization problem which makes the optimization problem much cleaner as we said because of the cost function and the constraints are going to be strictly convex. So, we are going to take this translation of LP to a dual form. The first partial derivations of this LP with respect to the primal value must vanish at the solution point. The equation is going to be becomes this particular way. Del LP of this terminology which is going to be deals about this value. So, here d is equal to 0. So, d is nothing but d1, d2, d3 up to dq of transpose is the vector of the desired values. So, the complementary condition must satisfy over there. So, that this states that the log range multiplier is going to be non-zero only if the corresponding data point satisfies the condition with equality. So, this may be replaced or this may be equality function can be defined as del so lambda i of d i w dot x i plus w naught minus 1 is equal to 0 where i is going to be changing from 1 to q. We employ this condition ahead in the calculation of this bias. Substituting both the equations into this which will yield the dual formalization as LD is going to be this expression where i is equal to 1 comma 1 comma 1 comma to the transpose and H is the Hessian matrix with elements H i j is equal to d i d j of x i comma so dot x j. So, the final dual optimization problem is then to maximize the value as like that. So, this value is going to be dealt as 0. With respect to the large lag range multiplier subject to this constraints which is going to be 0. This is now a standard quadratic programming optimization problem and that one can use a standard function in a MATLAB to perform the optimization numerically. So, typically such standard optimization packages will minimize an object function 
and so we will simply negate the dual lag ranging and work. This will yield the same result. Assuming that the numeric optimization yield optimized the lag range multiplier values, we observe that some of the lag range multipliers goes to zero so that the data vector for which the lag range multipliers are greater than that of zero are going to be called as super vectors are going to be called as support vectors. For all those data points which are not support vectors, the lambda i is equal to 0. This permits us to reduce the summation below from being overall q data points to being only over n's support vectors. So, we may now rewrite this optimal weight vector has from this equation which can be rewritten as like that so that we can reread this expression with the support vector as this. Note that in this sum only some of the terms contributes towards this w term those corresponding to the support vectors since for all other data points the lag range multiplies are 0. So, the optimal bias computed from this complementary conditions are going to be deal like this. So, whereas this n is the number of support vectors and the index k runs over support vectors only. So, finally, from the complementary conditions, we can compute the optimal bias value from any one of the support vectors x for which lambda s is going to be greater than 0 this gives the value as 1 over ds minus w dot xx. However, it is generally calculated by averaging overall support vectors. This yields this value where a little algebra has been employed after substituting from the equations of this above into this particular expression which yields a complementary or computationally more efficient expression in terms of the Hessian matrix HKL. Note that here the di is equal to either plus 1 or minus 1 and can be taken into the numerator without affecting the expression. So, that we are almost done with the linear separable case. So, the last point is that given any unknown data point x, one can classify it using a linear indicator function. So, that the linear indicator function can be dealt as y of x is equal to sine summation of i is equal to 1 to n as the di of lambda i of x dot x i plus w naught. So, if y of x is plus 1, x is going to be a classified as c1. If y of x is equal to minus 1, then x is classified into class c2. Okay. So, as we are going to summarize this with a linear indicator function. So, when we are going to see about this, y of x is going to be taken into a value of 1 plus 1 then the class is going to be related with R which is going to be get deals with classifies the class C1. If the same value y of x is equal to minus 1 as I said that the x value is going to be classified into class as C2. Okay. I hope that it will be easy for you to remember this. Okay. So, we will continue this in the next video. Thank you.